Hello YouTube, Tim here with my Home Guard 4.0. This was the <coughs> excuse me. This was my Home Guard style bow. I just trimmed two inches off the bow, one inch off each limb. I heated the limb, removed the the outer limb, the, the levers really, and then cut an inch of PVC off. I reinserted the limb to the original depth and then shortened the string accordingly. That's where we are. I'd like to test it and see what it draws now. <coughs> I'll put a link to the original video so that we can reference and compare them. And I think this is going to be very interesting. If it, if it doesn't explode, who knows? I mean, it shouldn't. It didn't before, and I think it, it'll well take a little bit more stress. But you never know. This is, there's only one way to find out. And it's by doing it. The brace height's a tiny bit larger. I removed a little bit more string than I ought to have if I wanted to keep that the same. But, to be perfectly honest with you, the brace height was too low on the last one, and it kept on slapping my wrist terribly. So I think this will be an improvement. Here we are with the usual rig and the usual setup. We have... Tear. One, two, three six and a half inch brace height. That's pretty darn good. I like that. That's a nice solid brace height for a bow. First drawing to 20 inches. I don't think there will be any problem there. 32 pounds, seven ounces, if I understand that correctly. 22 inches. Thirty-five pounds, four ounces. So we're already approaching at twenty-two inches. I'm, my guess is by twenty-four inches we'll approach the same draw weight that we had before at twenty-eight inches. That's substantial. That's a good increase. Assuming that from that increase we also get some efficiency, which due to the shed mass we should, although increased string angle will lead to more stacking. Let's go to 24 inches. 39, 40 pounds. We hit 40 pounds. 40 pounds at 24 inches, which puts us pretty much within striking distance of the original home guard bow that I made. That home guard bow was 47 pounds at 28 inches. Very good bow, very good shooter, highly efficient. I'm looking to best that. That's what this bow is here to do. So if we can't beat that, then back to the drawing board. If I have to shorten the outer limbs, I'll do that. If I have to shorten the inner limbs, I'll do that. But we're going to do better than that because my goal is we want to hit 200 feet per second. That other bow comes close. I think it could get about 170 feet per second out of it, but I know better is possible. 25 inches. 42.2, 43 pounds. 26 inches. 44 pounds. 21. Let's do to 28 inches now. Or did I did I skip one? Soft in the old noggin. My head's not where it should be. Okay, let's do one to 27 inches then. I think that's the next. Forty-five point eight five pounds. Somehow, I think I changed it from doing pounds and ounces to now decimals. So, go figure. I don't know how that happened. And 28 inches. Oh boy. I'm always nervous drawing bows to their final draw length. 48 pounds. Let's draw it there again. Forty-eight 
48 and a half pounds. I'd like to go one inch farther. I'd like to go to at least 29 inches, both for a safety margin. I think that's important when you're making bows, to stress them past where you know they're going to be used, but also just to see if we can get a little bit more performance out of it, which in reality also means I probably could shorten the bow to achieve the same effect. Of course, longer draws in general are better, even with a... Uh, okay, you'd rather have 48 pounds or 50 pounds at 30 inches rather than 50 pounds at 28 inches. You'll have a little bit longer power stroke, higher efficiency for that. So that's something to consider. Higher draw weight's not everything. Twenty-nine, fifty, and a quarter. There we go. Let me just draw it once manually so I can feel it. Now watch it explode in my hands after doing all that, right? Oh yeah, I think this is going to be a fine shooter. One thing that I can do I can trim off about a centimeter on the top. Again, it's not going to save very much weight, but when you're talking about efficiency, this is wasted. There's no point in having very much material beyond what's necessary to help hold on and retain the string. So we can definitely come down there. Also, look at the profile. It's almost certain that I can taper these a little bit more aggressively, particularly towards the ends. Because they're so long, I'm a bit nervous. And yes, this is poplar. This is not strong wood in particular. Oak would be a much hardier choice, however, a much heavier choice. And as we know, the closer to the tips you get, and rather, to the closer to the arrow you get, the more mass matters. The, the importance of mass is something like this. Imagine distance from the arrow. The handle is the farthest thing from the arrow. It doesn't move at all, has no effect. You're getting closer to the arrow as you go up the limb. Closer, 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 very close. Closer, 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 closest. Arrow mass right here at the center makes a big difference. That means even those little crimps that people can put on to help find their knock point, if they weigh six grains between two of them, that can affect you by approximately a foot per second. That's a huge difference. Rather, six grains up here won't do quite the same. You'll need, I think, two to three times that. Six grains here, again, not going to notice at all. You can add pounds here at the handle and it's not going to have any effect whatsoever. So let's unstring the bow and see what's happened to it. Because when we started off it had a tiny bit of reflex and it looks like it's coming right back. Yeah, there's maybe a centimeter of reflex there. Still, it's fantastic. It tells me that we're not overstressing the bow, probably in the slightest, which means, again, we can probably push our luck, make it a little bit shorter, a little bit faster, and a little bit more fun. Thanks so much for watching YouTube.